Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew and in this tutorial I'll show you how to showcase custom posts built with Jet Engine using the listing grid element in Bricks. The purpose of this element is to display structured content through previously built templates, pulling in data automatically from meta fields set up with Jet Engine. While the design of each template, also called listing, is based on its original setup, the listing grid defines how these templates appear collectively on the front end and offers some control over the presentation of content within each one. Plus, it integrates seamlessly with advanced Jet Engine features like the Query Builder. Before we dive into the listing grid settings, it would be nice if you could take a moment to click the like button and consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. First, let's review the brick settings to make sure that the toggles for pages, listings and any custom post types you want to display in the listing grid are enabled. Next, let's create a page and open it in Bricks Builder for editing. On the new page, I'll add a listing grid element into a container with a section element, one of the default layout options in Bricks. I'll also modify container's background and border and add a title. The listing grid settings are organized into two sections. The first, content, lets you choose what content appears in the grid and defines the structure of the listings within it. The second section, style, offers customization options similar to other bricks elements, but is tailored to adjust variables specific to the listing grid. In the content general settings, the top drop-down menu allows you to choose the listing that will be displayed in the grid. Keep in mind that a listing is a template that pulls specific information from content types, such as post types, and the post types you want to connect to are selected during the listing creation stage, not at this point. I'll select a listing titled Main Event Listing. By the way, you can check out a detailed tutorial on our channel that covers how to build listing templates like this one using Bricks. Let's look at the following general settings. Columns drop-down menu sets the number of columns in the grid layout. And remember that you can easily modify settings for different screen sizes by switching between different preview modes using icons in the top toolbar of the editor and using different settings. So, for example, I can switch to a mobile portrait layout, which means the screen width is under 478 pixels and change column number to 1 for a better UX on smartphones. This functionality is similar to that of Elementor. Use as archive template toggle should be enabled if you want this listing grid layout to automatically appear on archive pages. For example, if you're creating a template to showcase blog posts under specific categories, activating this setting will ensure the grid format is applied to all pages for displaying those categories across all your site. You can see the process of building listings for archive pages using Jet Theme Core and Jet Engine in one of our previous videos. The next field sets the status of the post that will be displayed, and by default it is set to published posts. Use random post number toggle allows displaying a random number of posts each time the page loads, and if enabled, you can choose the minimum and maximum post number. Then you can choose the number of posts displayed in a grid if you don't want it to be random, and you can set it to zero to show all posts that qualify for this grid. In the next field, you can specify a message to display when no posts are found to be displayed. The lazy load toggle enables lazy loading feature for grid items to improve page load speed by loading content as the user scrolls rather than all at once. When enabled, it adds a lazy load offset field for adjusting when the next batch of content should start loading. For example, if you set the offset to 200 pixels, the grid will load additional content when the user is 200 pixels away from it. If the Is Masonry Grid toggle is enabled, the posts will appear in masonry layout, which means they will not be arranged in fixed rows. 
and the equal columns height toggle ensures each listing in a single grid row has the same height by matching all listings heights to the tallest item in a row. If you click the load more toggle, you can choose how the post below the visible screen will be loaded. There are two options in the load more type field, by click and infinite scroll. The by click option allows you to add a button or any other element which, when clicked, will load new post into the grid. If you use this option, you need to specify an ID for that dedicated load more element and use the same ID in the elements CSS ID field. If you choose the infinite scroll option, the content will load automatically as the user scrolls down. You can also specify loader text and a loader spinner animation that will appear if the loading takes extra time. And use custom post types toggle should be enabled if you want to use several post types to be displayed in a single grid. The next set of settings in the grid content section contains a single toggle. Enable custom query builder. When you turn this toggle on, it allows you to select a query you've previously created with the query builder. This feature opens up tons of dynamic options for pre-filtering posts for the grid display providing different functionalities than regular filters. For example, in one of our recent videos, which you can find on our channel, I used the Query Builder to display only the posts that users had saved to a separate page by clicking the Data Store button. As you can see, I can reuse that same pre-built query here to display only the post that we interacted with previously. Or let's say you build a listing grid on a custom post type or page template and you want it to display posts related to the page or post where the grid will appear. You can set up a query to find matching posts by comparing data from the listing grid holder post or page with values from the post queried for the grid. This way, the same listing grid template will dynamically yield different relevant content on each page or post. The next set of settings in the content section is called element visibility and it has two options, always show or hide element if query is empty. By default, it's set to always show, so even if there are no listings, user will still see any design elements you've applied to the grid, like a border, background or a message indicating there are no listings to display. If you choose hide element, nothing will be displayed where the listing grid would normally appear on the front end when there are no listings. Finally, there is a slider section at the bottom that allows for a complete transformation of the design. One toggle here enables a typical slider which moves in a loop either automatically or when buttons are clicked. The second toggle activates a slider layout with scroll bar below. With the first toggle selected, the following options appear. Slides to scroll field sets the number of slides to move per transition. Show arrow navigation toggle displays navigation arrows. Arrow icon drop down chooses the style of the arrow icon. Show dots navigation adds navigation dots at the bottom of the slider. Autoplay enables automatic scrolling of slides. Autoplay speed sets the interval speed for autoplay, which is 5000 milliseconds or 5 seconds by default. Pause on hover pauses autoplay when the slider element is hovered over. Infinite loop restarts the slider when it reaches the last displayed listing, whether through continuing automated loop or by clicking navigation arrows. Center mode centers the active slide and by default the first listing in the grid is the one that will initially appear in the center of a slider. Animation speed adjusts the speed of slide transitions. If you enable the second toggle for the scroll slider, you'll only have two customization settings. One to set the screen size on which the scroll slider will be active and another for adjusting the column width. Note that the slider activation toggles won't be displayed if you've chosen the masonry layout, as these two layout designs cannot be combined. Moving on to the style settings. Most of these control the general appearance of the listing grid like its size, borders and how it relates to other elements on the page. I'll briefly explain each section's purpose starting with the layout section. In layout, you can set the grid's margin and padding, adjust its size and control positioning on the page. This option helps define how the grid sits within its container and interacts with surrounding elements. 
In the typography section, you can adjust font settings such as color, size and style. If you make changes, they will apply to all text across the listing grid except for the ones that were individually styled when creating the listing template. For example, if you adjust the font size, any unmodified text, like the description which was left at its default settings in this case, will change accordingly. However, text elements with custom styles like a title that had its font size and color specifically set earlier will remain unaffected by these global typography changes. The next three sets of settings, background, border and gradient, allow you to customize the grid's appearance just like with most other bricks elements and align its style with your website overall design. The transformed setting allows you to visually adjust an element by rotating, scaling, skewing or moving it without changing the actual layout structure. The CSS section in Bricks Builder lets you add custom CSS styles directly to an element, including using preset CSS filters or custom CSS and setting transition times. These options work well with pseudo classes like hover effects from the top bricks toolbar, allowing styles to change when users interact with the element. For a listing grid layout, however, they would be more effective when applied to individual listings rather than the entire grid elements. You can also assign a CSS class to the listing grid, enabling application of the same style settings across multiple elements. Alternatively, you can assign a unique CSS ID to target this specific listing grid. This allows you to use custom code with other elements on the website to make updates to this particular grid. This functionality can be used for initiating dynamic reloading of the listing grid when new items are added to its query, a feature that I previously used when creating dynamic data tables. The Attributes section allows you to add custom HTML attributes to the element to apply even more advanced design and functionality, which by the way was explained in more detail in one of the recent tutorials about Briggs Dynamic Calendar element. The next settings are in the Columns section, allowing you to modify the horizontal and vertical gaps between listings in a grid. This section may appear last, but if you go back to content settings and activate the slider layout, a new section will be added in style settings to control the design of slider specific elements. Enabling the regular slider without the scroll layout provides layout and design settings for arrow buttons and navigation dots, while the other one offers customization for scroll bar color, height and radius. When you're done with the customization, check out the listing grid design on the front end. There was an overview of the listing grid settings in the Bricks editor, which lets you control various layout aspects. Even with these basic configurations, you can create a wide range of interacting designs that display dynamic content delivered by the Jet Engine plugin. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to share them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like our content and join the Crocoblock community by subscribing to our channel. See you next time. Cheers.